Welcome to Kick Him in the Head, a podcast that takes an inside look at the world of mixed martial arts, featuring interviews with some of the top fighters from South Africa and around the world, with a focus on the EFC and UFC promotions. I'm your host, Yao. Join us as we delve deep into the techniques, strategies, and mindsets of these world-class athletes, learning from their experiences and gaining insights into what it takes to succeed in the toughest sport on earth. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Kick Him in the Head podcast. And as always, we have an absolutely amazing MMA interview. And tonight I have with me the one and only Ayanda the Power Zwane. Now, Ayanda is a professional mixed martial artist hailing from South Africa, known for his explosive style and powerful striking. Ayanda competes in the bantamweight division of the EFC, and he showcases his skill in various promotions and is recognized as, dy- as a dynamic fighter with a very dynamic approach. He's currently in the bantamweight, sorry, in the featherweight Grand Prix, and he's about to fight against the Hawk, Hokonya, Simba Rasha Hokonya. He's fought him before, didn't go his way, and tonight we are speaking with him and finding out how he's feeling about this fight that's upcoming. Ayanda, welcome to the Kick Him in the Head podcast. Thank you so much for having me, man. Excited to be here. Absolutely amazing. Now, I think I want to start off by saying... Thank you for making the time for us. And we're really, really looking forward to this fight because if you look at how this fight came together, if you look at the history between you and Simba, it's a very nice way for the EFC to have said, listen, we know there's very few contenders in the featherweight division who can beat Smiley. Let's make sure we create them. Let's take from the stock that we have. Let's take the best that we have and let's put them against each other to prove that they are worthy of fighting Smiley. So thank you for giving your time to us today. And I think my first question is, how did it feel, and I asked you this last night, we were on the dust up and shakedown with Ola, but how did it feel, the energy that was there when you had the face-off with Simba at the last EFC, after you'd obviously won your first fight in stunning fashion, how did it feel? I mean, beating Gonzalez, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a tough fight. Yeah, I mean, it's great, it's amazing to, uh, to be part of that. Uh, not only to be part of it, but to go toe-to-toe with Steven and took the victory in a fashion manner. Um, the stay down to Kanye, man, I picked up a lot of things. You know, I always pick up on the small things and I picked up so much from the stay down and I was in the moments as well, enjoying my victory, my victory. And look, I was excited, man. I was excited for the stay down and really excited about my victory against Steven, man. How was it? Because I saw that fight live. I was there. There were head kicks flying all over the show. Honestly, the fact that you and Simba then faced off for me was like, damn, these are some tough, tough mothers because after a fight like that, <laughs> you can still come in and say, listen, I'm ready for the next one. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, but I think, how, how's your camp been? Because now you've been in what would be a long camp because now it's basically yeah. a three-fight camp in one. How is that intensity and how's your mental mindset going through this? Because you have to be very mentally strong. That's you away from your family, you away from the rest of your life for a very long time, focusing on, on your martial arts and fighting. How is that preparation going? Oh, it's been amazing, man. So the thing about me and my teammates, we we're always training, we train every day. So it's like we're always in camp, you know. Um, it's been a long one, 100%, but uh, we've been focusing a lot on our weaknesses, man, our weaknesses things that we should have done in the first fight or things we should have done in the previous fights. You know, we're always improving per fight. Whether we win or lose, we're always improving. There's always room for improvement. We're always going to be students of the sport. Uh, it doesn't matter how far you go. We're always going to be students of the sport. And I'm excited about this fight, you know, because it's been a beautiful camp. I'm ready. I'm always ready mentally, uh, which is a big part. So, you know, going to this fight, honestly, I'm just relaxing, man. I'm chilling. You know, um, maybe I could be Conor McGregor and go party as well and just hit, hit the lights, you know. <laughs> but hey, man, I'm just relaxing. Um, I'm not thinking much about the fight. Um, it's all just weight cutting now. The camp, we, we've been pushing the camp crazy. Um, now we're just focusing on the weight cut, man. You know, it's been an amazing camp. We, we're going into this fight with clear heads. And we're going to this fight with a good plan, a good strategy. And the game plan will definitely stick up. And I can't wait to step in, man, and take my old back that Simba took from me. 
So you mentioned the long camp that you've had, and obviously you're having a good time. You could be a Conor McGregor. What's the funniest thing that's happened to you on this camp so far? What's what's been that one moment that's just made you laugh and laugh, and you can think about it right now and still start laughing? Oh, one moment. Um, flip, man. I guess ah, I can't have that moment, eh? I can't really, I can't even think of such a moment because well, it's always a good time when we're training and when we just pumping up with the guys. Uh, we're always making jokes, we're always having fun. We just take that to the fights as well, you know. Never too serious. We always just keep it straight down forward. It's all about having fun, you know. It's a, that's one thing that we as fighters we lack. You know, we take it too seriously. I and mean, yeah, we should take it seriously because we're going there to risk our lives. But enjoy it. Have fun. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the injuries that come with it. Enjoy every single thing. Have fun and then go do your thing when, they, when the time comes. End of the day, it's still a sport. It may not be soccer. It may not be rugby. It may not be anything. But enjoy. It's still a sport. You know, I absolutely love those words and, and what you said earlier as well, uh, when you said, you know, win or lose, you know, have a good time, have fun. And a lot of fighters let potential losses or losses just go to their heads. And unfortunately, like you said, you know, it's win or lose. It's a fight. You can win or you can lose. It could go your way. It couldn't go your way. Uh, if you look at Tom Aspinall uh, in his, I think, one loss, he got an injury. And that was unfortunate, but it was a loss. You know, you can't let those sorts of losses or a loss, any kind of loss go to your head. So I think those words are absolutely amazing, especially for, you know, younger fighters. Uh, right now we have our young fighters, our amateur fighters fighting at the IMAFs out in Namibia, doing amazing things. Patriots, because they were there during election day yesterday here in South Africa. Yeah. So, you know, these encouraging words are absolutely phenomenal for, for the youth, for the young fighters that are up and coming. But the words I want to hear from you, what do you have to say to Simba directly? Because we've spoken to Simba. We heard what he has to say to you, which you will hear when the episode comes out. But what words do you have for Simba ahead of this fight? Look, what I can say to Simba, look, Simba, I hope you're ready. I hope you've been pushing. I hope everything is good. I hope camp is going amazing. I hope you you show up at your top notch. Uh, no excuses, no runarounds. I hope you show up for a fight. I hope you show up to help you improve. I know you've improved. I mean, I've improved as a fighter, so I know you have improved as well. But what I can say is show up and be ready to take on the storm because there's a huge storm coming your way and you want to be able to stop it. The words from the horse's mouth himself, a yonder the power swan, putting it down. And that's exactly what we love to hear is you guys, you still have mutual respect. As much as you fought before, you've lost before, you guys still have mutual respect. You're going to go into battle, amazing battle in a week's time, but the respect is there. And, and yeah. that's another thing I think about fighting that a lot of fighters sometimes forget is respect still has to be there. Whether or not you're talking smack to get a fight, whether or not you're, you know, going at someone because it's just before a fight, the respect still needs to be there because right. that's what keeps the sport together. Otherwise, we end up like the Russians. I'm not sure if you've seen what happens out in Russia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely wild. <laughs> now, I know that it's you're heavy on Instagram. There's this one account called AMC. Uh, if you want to see just insane Russian MMA, like the things that happen before the fight, after the fight, like, whoo, those guys are very, very intense. Very well, intense. Well, it is Russia after all, you know? <laughs> it is Russia after all. So if you had an opportunity, would you go out and fight in the Russian MMA regional circuit? Uh, I wouldn't, honestly. Um, the way they run things, the way they do things, um, it's not my top of thing, man. It's no more for them. It's no more a sport. It is. I don't know what it is for them. Uh, for me, it's just a sport, man. I'm just having fun. I'm out here having fun and making money in the way. So for them, it's just it's a different thing, you know. So nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, I've seen literally guys getting knocked out before the fight at the weigh-ins. It's like, but what are you guys doing? How's there going to be a fight now? Like <laughs> concussion? Like, Hello. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> So you're fighting on the title card uh, for the EFC featherweight fight between Terence Balello and I'm not sure if you know this, but unfortunately, no longer to Melo Manyamala. Um, I was going to, the question was supposed to be, who do you think is going to win between those two? But now that Tumelo's out of the fight, he's got an injury. Who would you like to see Terence fight in that 
title fight because now it's a vacant position. The EFC is going to have to do some matchmaking. Who do you want to see? I honestly didn't know if Dumelo was out, eh? Uh, yes. No one knows. This is breaking wow. news. <laughs> this is breaking news, man. <laughs> I was looking forward to that fight, man. It was going to be one epic fight between Terence and Dumelo. I think they're one of the biggest stars in Flowers right now, you know? And they're doing the most. Yes, Flowers. A lot of Flowers that are really good. Um, I'd say... Throw in Spider Man. Uh, what's his full name? I can't remember his full name, but he called him Machavani, Spider. Edson Machavani with Trapdoor yes. Spider. Yes. That's a good one. Him. I say throw him in if he's ready, if he wants to. Um, but uh, Flowers, it's a bit tight, you know. Flowers, they're not much mm. top contenders in Flowers, you know. You wouldn't throw but... gifts back in if he's ready? Give the day one. Really. I think if needs to, I think, look, I like the guy. I respect the guy. But I think he needs another fight just to bring himself back up, just to build it, you know. Um, but look, he can come in as well. We can have a Terrence and Gift too. You know, Terrence can redeem himself. Gift can showcase that, look, what happened was just a fluke. So why not? Let's throw, him, let's throw Gift in. I know he's always ready. He's always training. He's always got for a fight. Throw him in. I know, look, it's gift after all. Those two, I'm sure Terrence would love that fight. I think he would love to redeem himself after that fight. So, yeah, I mean, gift is the only big name that you can throw in there, man. And I think exactly as you said, you're looking to get your O back. Terrence is definitely looking to get his O back. I think he might call for the rematch and say, look, let's do the double. Let's see who is better because I think I was better and you got lucky. So I'm the champ. Well, interim champ, but, you know, he, he should be getting his yeah. title shot. But it's unfortunate that uh, King Shaka's injured as well. So, yeah, I think it's it's going to be amazing to see exactly what the EFC can put together, what Graham, Graham and um, Ashley can put together. I mean, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. 100%. I mean, for Gift, it's, it's, yeah. uh, this is what he wants, man. I mean, look, if, if they throw him in, it's good for him. He can, if he beats Terrence, he can go and... Again, try and revenge himself against Zulu in showcase that look what happened. Didn't really, I wasn't my night, you know, I wasn't ready, whatever the case was. So I think, look, Gift's name should be up in there as well when they're talking. Graham and Ash should say, look, here's Gift. Let's also think about Gift, you know, if he wants it, because you never know what guys want, you know, maybe he's not ready, maybe he's been just chilling and relaxing. So I think it'd be a good mm -hmm. fight to Terence and Gift. It's a shame we won't be able to see Dumel and Terence right now, but I was looking forward to that fight. I was looking forward to the Cape Town Derby as well, because I mean, all you Cape Town guys have yeah. suddenly come in a flood to say, listen, don't forget about Cape Town. We know about Joburg, we know about Durban. Don't forget about Cape Town. Just because we don't have local promotion does not mean we do not have top fighters coming out of Cape Town. So I was looking forward to that Cape Town Derby for the interim title, but Maybe we'll see it in the future. We'll definitely have you. Maybe yeah. you'll have some other Cape Tonian coming through the ranks as well to come through and say, well, I'm also challenging for the title. But let's see what happens in the future. Let's see how it goes. Yanda, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Good luck with your fight. I think you and I and, and um, Simbarashe is going to be a great fight. It's definitely earmarked by me as one of the fights of the night. So I'm really looking forward to that fight. Good luck. And I look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday, 6th of June at the pi thank you so much brother and one no, thing for sure you, you never, yeah. kick it with the head yes so i was actually about to say listen we like to end our show in one simple way and you've just done it so i don't even need to ask you <laughs> i know the drill. thank you so much Yanda. so for anyone who's looking to find you on the socials where can they find you what are your handles man i'm on all social media platforms instagram i under the power zone Facebook, I under the power zone. Hey, it's TikTok as well. I under the power zone. Make sure to follow me. Whatever you need to do, comment, like, subscribe, whatever the case is. Much love. Love everybody. Thank you so much, everybody that's been supporting me. I love you guys so much. Thursday night, we knuckle up, man, and we throw it down. And most importantly, we kick them in the head. Let's get it. 
That's right. And as Yana said, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe at Head Kick Pod on all platforms. And as always, don't forget to kick him in the head. And I mean, Yana's done it two, three times. Thank you, Yana. Amazing to have you on the show. And we'll see you next week. Cheers, my brother. Yes.